demonstrate how I can spin this bucket full of water around without losing a drop using Newton's second law and path coordinates. I will start by swinging the bucket back and forth and bringing it into circular motion in front of me. As you can see, although the bucket is sometimes upside down, the water never spills. Also, there's an inherent relationship between the mass of the bucket, the length of the string, and the velocity of the bucket. I exploit that in order to bring it, the bucket to rest. Now I can use a slightly more complicated path, like this one, that goes on both sides of my body, but is still relatively circular. If I increase the effective length of the string by moving my arm with it, I can again slowly bring the bucket to rest without spilling. Therefore, we will analyze the bucket when it is completely upside down, at the top point on the circle. At this point, the velocity should be completely horizontal. We'll suppose that the water will fall if the string would have to exert a force in the upward direction to keep the bucket on its path, as the string cannot exert compressive forces. We can now apply Newton's second law. Using path coordinates, we can see that all forces should be in the normal direction, and we will only consider our acceleration component in that direction. Solving for tension, we can see where the force would change to a compressive one and give bounds to our expression. For the water not to fall, we see that v squared over rho must be greater than the acceleration due to gravity. Note that this final result holds true if the water and bucket are analyzed as separate particles as well. This explains why the water does not fall at the top. But what would happen if I were to jerk the string at the top of the bucket's motion, slowing it down just enough that the drive condition no longer holds? The answer? I would get wet.